So we have a problem here that says that we have an asteroid of mass equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 15th kilograms, and it is in an elliptical orbit around Earth. We observe its orbit at points A, B, C, and D on this ellipse, and part A says to draw vectors that represent the asteroid's net force as well as the parallel and perpendicular change in momentum at each point. And we will get to these two in just a little bit, but the very first thing we want to draw is the net force vector, because the net force on an ellipse at any given point is always going to be equal to gravitational force caused by the Earth wanting to pull in this asteroid. Um, and the gravitational force vector at any given point is going to point from the asteroid in toward Earth. So at all four of these points, we're just going to draw vectors that point from the asteroid over to the center of Earth. So now that we have these net force vectors drawn, we can focus on the parallel and perpendicular change in momentum vectors at each point. And when we talk about the change in momentum at each of these points, we're coming from an equation that tells us that the change in momentum is going to be equal to force times the change in time. So what we're really talking about being the change in momentum is the change in momentum over the change in time. So really we're just drawing more force vectors uh, in the parallel and perpendicular sense of uh, following the motion of this asteroid. And we can actually use point B to help start us out here with the parallel force. So when we have our motion we have a counterclockwise orbit, so our asteroid is going to be moving in this direction, uh, in this instant. So if we want to start off with our parallel change in momentum, uh, this vector has to be uh, parallel to the momentum that we have at this point, um, but we're representing a force so when we have our net force vector pointing back this way, we can't draw our parallel force vector this way because that's not the direction that our force is happening. Uh, our parallel force, our parallel change in momentum is pointing back this way because not only is our asteroid starting to slow down, uh, this parallel change in momentum is pretty much acting like a component of this net force. So we have to follow this component and point backwards so that we can represent this asteroid slowing down, its change in momentum being backward despite the fact that it is moving forward. And in the same sense, our perpendicular change in momentum is pretty much going to be like uh, a component of the net force. So where we would finish this component here, we can just draw it pointing out from the asteroid. Our perpendicular change in momentum, which really just finishes up this whole component thing for the net force, uh, but nonetheless, we have drawn it at point B accurately. So we can just do the same thing at point D as well. Uh, this diagonal net force vector being split up into its components, so to speak. Um, and we can just draw our instantaneous directional momentum. Our asteroid will be moving this direction, because uh, it is a counterclockwise orbit, um, and then we can use that to help choose uh, the direction that our parallel change in momentum is going to be. 
because down here at point B, it was the opposite from uh, the actual direction. But at point D, we are actually going to draw the parallel change in momentum the same direction. Because uh, again, acting like components of this net force, it has to line up and our asteroid is going to be speeding up as it comes back toward Earth. Uh, and as well, we can draw the perpendicular change in momentum vector, just completing this uh, components theme that we have. So we've saved points A and C for last for a reason, because uh, when we talk about our motion at the very ends, of an ellipse, um, our momentum at these points are going to be very perfectly perpendicular to our net force, which changes one of these values straight to zero. And that's because at points A and C, um, our asteroid is going to experience something that is very much like uniform circular motion, force due to uniform circular motion. It's really not, but it's, it's just a phenomenon that happens uh, at these two points because the momentum does end up perpendicular to the net force, which would be true at any given point on a circle. Um, but obviously we have an ellipse here, so this is only true for points A and C. So because of this little phenomena here, uh, the change in momentum vector that is not going to be drawn is the parallel vector because this is sort of very close to uniform circular motion. So the only accurate change in momentum vector would be the perpendicular change in momentum. And this vector, only at points A and C, uh, this perpendicular vector is going to be equal to the net force, just because there is no value for the parallel change in momentum to uh, become a component with it. So. With those short little rules, as long as there are no other forces acting on this asteroid, these are the most accurate vectors we can draw for each of the things that we have been asked for. And with that, we can move on to part B.